Hey guys, so we're getting ready to install a new package of beads in our top bar hive here. And so I am burning the uh, the top rails. And so I want to show y'all something. The reason I'm burning it is because this, uh, this hive got infested with wax moths last year. And that's what destroyed the whole hive. So I froze a lot of the top bars, but I couldn't remember which ones weren't frozen. So I said I'll burn a few and check this out. As I was burning this one, there is a worm right there. You see him? He just kind of popped up a little bit. And my, my cameraman, Jackson, are you able to get that? Okay. So that's why I burned these because that little dude right there is more than likely wax moth larva. And so we're, and if we didn't do that, then we'd be setting ourselves up for failure. So just want to show you guys that quick little tidbit. This thing's been in the garage all winter long and uh, that guy evidently just hatched. So uh, just a few minutes, we'll suit up and we'll put the bees in. All right, so you saw we, uh, we burnt our hive earlier and uh, we burnt every surface that had anywhere where wax moth you know, might have laid an egg uh, for the reasons that we just showed because those little worms will hatch and then they will of course you know, uh, lay their larva. The larva wants to eat all of the wax and brood and everything. It just becomes a mess and the hive isn't strong enough, it'll die. So a little bit about the top bar hive. This is really, you know, I, I believe one of the first ways that humans began keeping bees was in this very simplistic form. So basically it's just a V-shaped container. And these are your top bars. That's why they call it a top bar hive. So these bars just kind of sit on the very top of the hive. It's got a little notch right here where the bees will come. They'll start their honeycomb and these will hang down in a V shape, the honeycomb, and they'll either put brood or they will put honey in that comb. And uh, this is, you know, this is a pretty large area for this many bees. So, uh, you know, I believe this is 10,000 bees, which seems like a whole lot, but you know, large hives can have way more. So what we want to do is reduce the size temporarily, and then the hive kind of grows with the bees. What I mean by that is this particular hive has a feeder that has a built-in wall. Now I've removed this part of the wall because we need some uh, hardware cloth to go on the inside so that the bees don't slip. These, the company that built this kind of made a mistake in my opinion and this is real smooth. And so last year I had a lot of bees drown because they couldn't get out. But until I get the hardware cloth, I'm just gonna have to kind of use it as is and I will put another type of uh, sugar water feeder inside the hive down in the bottom. But for, uh, for learning purposes, that is the wall. And I'm going to use about 10, 9 or 10 of the top bars. I only want them to be able to have access to this much of the entire uh, cavity right now. Because it's not a lot of bees and they just don't, simply don't need that much space. They'll be trying to build in areas that they don't need to be. And it's more area that they'll have to protect from wax moths and hive beetles. So we're gonna reduce it down to this size. What we're gonna do is spray these guys with some sugar water uh, to calm them down a little bit and they'll start eating the sugar water off one another. Plus it kind of, it gets on their wings and they're not as active and it kind of keeps them busy for a little bit. Uh, and so when we shake them out, they don't really just fly all over the place. They're gonna fly, but it won't be as bad because they'll have that sticky sugar water on them. So that's what we're about to do. We're gonna spray these guys. We're going to take these nine or 10 top bars out, shake them in, and then the queen, she's in her own little capsule, her own little cage in there. And one end is a cork, and one end is a, uh, a candy type wax. And the other bees will try to start eating that candy and possibly release her within about three to five days. Now we're gonna wait five days before we check it 
And if they haven't released her, then we're going to take a toothpick and we're going to push that candy out and we're going to let her out. The reason we want to keep her in there for that many days, her pheromones and her scent is going to just, you know, get all over that uh, area. And they're going to say, okay, this is home. Uh, you know, our queen's here. She's been here for a couple days now. So evidently we're staying. And so that's the whole purpose behind the wax and the queen cage. So let's go ahead and spray them with some sugar water, which we've got in our little bottle here. You can hear them buzzing around and probably see them flying and you'll instantly see them quiet down because it gets on their wings and then they can't fly near as well. Flip it around and do the other side. I want to try to get as many of them coated as possible. See how they quiet down? And I just spray them, spray them, spray them. It's not going to hurt them, not going to drown. And then I'm going to grab my tool. We're going to pop this lid loose. This is what the queen cage is attached to, this piece of plastic right here. And that's kind of like the hanging cord or hanging rope, if you will. So let me grab the tool real quick. This is our hive tool. Use it for a lot of things to remove the frames in the future, clean stuff up a little bit, and to pry this lid up. And we'll try not to break this lid and try not to break all this stuff because this could be used to catch a swarm in the future or uh, you know, something along those lines. There's the can of sugar water that the company that we buy them from, which uh, is Johnson's Bee Supply over near Aiken, South Carolina. They got a website, just search Johnson's Bee Supply. Super nice folks and they'll help you in any kind of way. And this guy, I'm gonna put him up here. All right, so in the past, I've had trouble getting this can out until I saw a guy do just a simple little trick, which is this. And you see how we kind of flip this cage over? That can falls right out. Now, why I didn't think about that, I don't know, but I sat there for probably 10 minutes trying to get that can up out of this hole. So now once we pull the can out, they're gonna have access to the outside world and us. So I'm gonna pull the can out and we'll take my sugar water, keep it handy. I'm gonna spray that down in there because there's a lot of guys on the center that don't have any sugar water on them and they're gonna be able to fly and uh, really want them to stay as close to this hive as possible. If you can see by the sun and the, uh, the shadows there, we're getting pretty close to sunset. I want to do that because once I put them in the hive, you know, when it gets dark, they're certainly not going to fly anywhere and they'll be, uh, you know, already in their home and they'll just be forced to kind of stay and chill out there all night. And then tomorrow they can imprint, fly around and uh, learn their surroundings. So I'm going to have my sugar water ready as I pull this can out. And I'll just start spraying on the side of the cage. Take the sugar water and set it to the side. Use my tool. I'm gonna go ahead and move a couple of these frames out of the way in the side that we wanna restrict them to. there and the queen is in this cage right here and I believe that she is marked I can't remember if I asked them to mark her or not let me see here okay no I didn't but the queen is in there you can see her very long 
abdomen. And there's a couple workers in there. They'll put some workers in there to take care of her. The workers will grab sugar water from the other guys and feed it to her and tend to her while she's in this little cage. So there's your court in there. And then there's your candy in. And all that white stuff is the candy. And they'll begin chewing, which they're already doing. That's why they're on this side here. They're trying to release her. And they put a little piece of cork up in there as well. So this, this actually is one of those cages where we will have to release her. They won't be able to. A lot of times they'll put just candy in this end and they can, they can release her. But in this case, we have to. So in five days, we'll definitely have to come back, pop that little piece of cork out and put this back in the hive. She'll climb out and then she'll go to work because the workers by that time will have already started to build a little bit of comb. Uh, and then hopefully if everything is just right, she'll stay and they will build their comb and we'll have an established hive at that point. I'm gonna be real careful not to smash anybody because once you smash them, they release a pheromone and then they all get pretty upset and they'll start buzzing you and it's just not a good scenario. So we'll just try to be careful. And I'm going to go ahead and get, uh, I've got some tacks. I think I left one back in the cart. I'll grab it, put the tack through this little cord, and we'll just let her hang in the center. That way all her pheromones and her smell will just kind of coat the inside. And then, as I said before, everybody will say, okay, this is home. So I got my little reefer nail. I thought I had some tacks, but a reefer nail will work too. And we're just going to take her... And pretty much, like I said, hang her in the center of this cavity. And again, these gloves are not the best. Let me take this nail. And this is why I wish I had a tack, because these nails are super fat. And we'll take our tool. there in the cavity right there in the center which is perfect and now we'll take them we'll use a little more sugar water because they're starting to fly around a bit as soon as they get that sugar water off of them they'll take to the air all right so now is the fun part what we'll do and i'm not going to do it on the hive for sure but I'll come right here on the concrete and I'm going to tap them down pretty hard. I'm just going to dislodge everybody and they'll just kind of wad up. We're going to go over there and we're going to start shaking. And this is when they're going to start flying. So we'll just take twice like that. We've got them all dislodged. And we'll bring them over here. And just tip it back and forth side to side. And try to get as many of them out as we can. And try to hit the box a little bit. Because they'll hang on to the side pretty good. But we've done a pretty good job. I'll smack them one more time. Shake them around. All right, that's about as many as I think I'm going to be able to get out right there. You can show that in the cage. So now what we'll do, we're just going to set this on the ground right here. And then they'll come out on their own and they'll be able to find their new home. So we've got her hanging there. I'm going to put this, these bars back in place. And then this will be their new, their new home. Careful not to squish anybody. So they're definitely going to be right here. And I've got a brush here. I'm taking this kind of gently. 
flick them away from there so we don't smash anybody and set off the alarm and then they get really, really agitated. I'll just try to get these top bars tight enough where nobody can really you know access it up through the top there so close up all those gaps and now they're able to go under this wall just a little bit so on this side what we're going to do is put our makeshift feeder like I said, the other one, I've got to wait for the hardware, or hardware cloth. So in the meantime, so that we can feed them, I put a little piece of block down there. And I'm going to go grab the one gallon sugar water container, set it in there. They'll be able to sneak through that couple of little gaps in the bottom, come over here, get something to drink, and go back until they uh, become aware of their surroundings. It's springtime here. Uh, it's actually Easter Sunday. So stuff's blooming, flowers are busting open. Tomorrow what they'll do is they'll come out and they'll do circles and they'll fly higher and higher and they're mapping this area almost like GPS style. Um, that way they can find their way back. So they'll start to increase their range a little bit more, a little bit more, up to I think two miles is what I've read. And they'll find flowers, they'll find nectar, they'll find pollen, they'll come back you know, do their little dance, let everybody else know where it's at, go get it, bring it back. All the meanwhile, they'll be building their comb, and once they get some comb ready, the queen will start doing her job, depositing eggs, and making, uh, you know, making new bees. And from then on, you know, it, uh, nature just kind of takes its course, and they'll start making honey, they'll start making babies, or they'll start growing. And hopefully, if the wax moths and the hive beetles don't get us again, we're going to have some nice honeycomb uh, to enjoy here about midsummer. So hey thanks for watching. We'll uh, keep you posted. We'll check back and you know, check on their progress and we'll film it and show you guys. I'm no expert beekeeper by any means. This is only my second year. I'm still learning too so if you have any comments or pointers for me you know put them in the comment box below and uh, we appreciate you guys for watching.